So this is Japanese knotweed, a terrible invasive in this country. Scientific name, Raynotria hyponica. Again, it's got the typical leaves that you'd find. Um, and unfortunately, if you try to control it any, any other way, like trying to dig it out or anything like that, it only causes a lot of damage. But you leave any pieces of this near the knotweed, you know, pieces of knotweed, it will grow into another one. In its own country, it's valued for uh, as a source for uh, for honeybees as far as that. Here, it's terrible. And it'll slowly spread, as you can see, spreading further and further out until it forms a mass expanse. And again, you can't really treat it. You leave a little piece, it keeps on growing. This is one you have to control using, um, using unfortunately, herbicides. It's the only way to really control it. You gotta do it just the right time. But Japanese knotweed, one of many kinds of knotweeds, in this case, this time an invasive one, that is not good uh, for the environment something that we need to be, take care of and to get rid of every chance that we can. This one's not in bloom. Uh, I have heard that even though it blooms over here, and although supposedly the bees like it, uh, at least uh, European honeybees do, in reality um, it doesn't form a lot of a lot of different kinds of fruits. Uh, and they think that the main pollinator that really uh, that really does is giant resin bees, which is another invasive around here. And again, it's not good because, uh, you know, th this is not one that we want to, to, get, to, to continue to spread.